when we are the angels who strive to deliver and make a new world. That's just about the sermon right there. I'd like to read the scripture from Luke chapter 2, 22 to 39 in the inspired version, which tells us about the blessing of Jesus. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male which openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is written in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man at Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit to, into the temple, and when the parents brought the child, even Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and Mary marveled at those things which were spoken of the child. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a spear sh shall pierce through him to the wounding of thine own soul, also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband only seven years, whom she married in her youth. And she lived a widow about fourscore and four years, who departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. Jesus is 40 days old in the story. The requisite number of days for a woman to spend in isolation for purification after the birth of a son. 40 calendar days after Christmas is Candlemas, the Christian holiday, February 2nd, also called the day of presentation, presentation of the infant Jesus to the temple. It's also the secular holiday, Groundhog Day. So why isn't this sermon on February 2nd? Well, I suppose it could be, but the focus of the scripture for today is not really on the presentation of Jesus, but on the four adults who were involved in his blessing. Joseph, Mary, Simeon, and Anna. Not just on that day, but every day, each and every day, these people practiced their faith according to the Mosaic law. Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple because according to the law, the firstborn son was to be presented to God at the temple. Simeon, led by the Spirit, went to the temple every day to serve. He had been told that he would not see death until he had seen the Christ. Anna, an elderly widow, 84 years old, was a prophetess and served at the temple day and night. Simeon's blessing on the Christ child is told by Luke. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of the people Israel. Anna also witnessed the blessing, responding, gave, she gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all who looked for redemption at Jerusalem. 
So there they are, four faithful people, thankful, who recognize the divinity of Christ and great things to come. And here we are today, a small group of thankful people, two days after the 2020th or so celebration of the Christ child's birth. Our angels might not be obvious, but if we follow the commandments, if we show up for opportunities to worship, to serve, and sometimes just through habit, we remain teachable and ready to follow the Spirit. The Spirit is always there. It's up to us to listen and follow. I'd like to tell you a story about the faith journey of a little girl named Grace. And you might want to uh, move your uh, share screen over so that you can see her a little better. She was a precocious, inquisitive child and liked to read books about science and the natural world. But something about what the books told her bothered her. It said that it took millions of years for Earth to form and for life to evolve on Earth. That's not what she learned in Sunday school. So she pondered the problem for a couple of years, not telling anyone, not even her family. She didn't kneel and pray in the grove like young Joseph Smith did, nor did an obvious angel appear to her. But she received an idea, a suggestion in her mind, and the message was, learn all you can about religion and science. So she tried. She decided to attend, to stay for church and not just go to Sunday school, which had been her habit all during her childhood years. So here she is reading her Bible. She read voraciously about science. When she turned 12, she felt that she knew God existed, not just faith, but knowledge. Maybe the early Christian writers, her early biblical writers, just had to oversimplify the story of creation. On her journey, she met a friend who attended the RLDS church. When she heard about the restoration gospel, it made so much sense to her. Yes, God speaks to us today. And the people were so welcoming. They even let her play volleyball, even though she wasn't very good at it. Okay, Grace, let's serve. She didn't realize that the spirit was leading her and guiding her the whole time. But I know it now. You probably figured out that uh, that young girl was, was Grace, my middle name. And I know that the Spirit is trying to lead me. I don't always follow right away because there are so many distractions like the highway signs on the interstate. I found that the more I learn about God in the natural world, either by experience or study, the more compatible they become. I especially like the message of the inspired version where God explained to Moses that he created all the numerous worlds, not just our world, by the word of his power. Verse 21 of the introductory, uh, introductory revelation. So all things were in his mind before they materialized. We were all created in God's mind. I found in my course of study that God really likes insects. There are so many of them. So I decided to study insects even more, eventually becoming a professor of biology. And one of my first students followed a similar path, at least academically, and became a tropical botanist. We made acquaintance later on, and he told me about how he was taking his students to the Peruvian Amazon rainforest on a yearly basis. And he invited me to join and bring some of my uh, 
students as well. So I did this for several summers. And usually, while hiking through the rainforest is great, walking on the canopy walkway is the mountaintop experience. Now the canopy walkway is a rope suspension bridge that it's attached 115 feet above the ground to about a dozen of the largest trees in the area. And I walked that canopy walkway. Yes, in, in spite of my fear of heights, I felt okay with the ropes around me. Well, one evening after the canopy walkway, there were several of us sitting around in the dining hall, just relaxing. And one of the uh, participants said, well, so do you think there's a God? And this is a discussion among people who are well-versed in evolutionary theory. But, and you'd expect a debate, but there wasn't. Everyone seemed to come to some kind of consensus that, of course, there's a God. Just look around you. There has to be an intelligence governing all of this. When did you realize that the spirit has been leading you? Whether it was an obvious angel or a still small voice, it's there for all of us. Our mission prayer begins, Lord, where will your spirit lead today? May God bless you and may you have a much more productive and prosperous new year. Amen.